In this lesson, we are going to talk about the dot product of vectors and a couple applications of how it's used. So to start off, what is a dot product? The notation for a dot product looks like so. We've got a vector u, vector v, and then just a solid dot in between, just like we use a, a dot for um, sometimes showing the, the product of two numbers. Um, or uh, if you think back to matrices, we talked about dot product of matrices. Well, we didn't, but um, you've learned how to find the dot product of matrices. This is real analogous with that. Um, so if we take the dot product of two vectors, um, in this case, vector u and vector v, then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the first two terms in each, Okay, what we think of as the x, or the, the, the first coordinate, and then add that to the product of the second two terms. Okay, the, since that's the case, the dot product of two vectors always ends up being a scalar or a single number, not a vector. Okay, and we're going to use this to find the angle between two vectors, and we're going to use it to calculate work. So, let's look at just a simple example of finding the dot product between two given vectors. So, in example number one, we've got vector u and vector v, <clears throat> both in component form. So, if we want to find the dot product of u and v, then again, we're going to multiply the first two terms. So 3 times 5 plus the product of the second two terms, 4 and 2, and simplify. 3 times 5 is 15. 4 times 2 is 8. And when we add those together, we get 23. So again, we get a scalar single number, not a vector. All right, so here's example number two and three for you to try in your notes. Again, it needs to be in component form. If it's not, first thing you want to do is put it there. Okay, <clears throat> so um, first application of dot products. How do you find the angle between two vectors? Okay, if theta is the angle between the non-zero vectors u and v, then here's our formula. The cosine of theta equals, here's our dot product of those two vectors divided by the product of the magnitudes of those two vectors. Or if we're solving for our angle, which we typically will be, then since we're looking for that unknown angle, we want to take the inverse cosine of the dot product of the two vectors over the magnitudes products. Okay, and that's going to give us that angle theta from 0 to pi since that's the restrictions of our cosine. <clears throat> so um, let's look at an example. Find the angle between vectors u and v. Again, we're given vector u, we're given vector v. Um, I like to give a little sketch. So 2, 3 is going to be over 2, up 3. So vector u is going to look something like so. Vector v is left to up 5 left to up 5, so we're going to go there. Okay, so here's our two vectors, u and v. Um, so I'm looking for this angle in here, this angle theta. So um, let's follow our formula. So we want to take the inverse cosine of the product of our two vectors, excuse me, the dot product of our two vectors. So I want to take 2 times a negative 2 and then add that to the product of the two second terms, so the y coordinates, 3 times 5. Okay, and then all that over the product of the magnitude. So I need to find the magnitude of each one. So magnitude of u is the square root of u1 squared plus u2 squared. And the same thing for v. Find the magnitude of v squared. Oops. 
5 squared. Okay, so quite a formula. So now we've just got some algebra to do. Let's simplify. We don't. We can put all this in our calculator, but uh, wow, that's a lot of parentheses. So let's simplify. Let's do some mental math. <clears throat> so 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus uh, 15 is going to give us 11. So we've got 11 as our numerator. Okay, so 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4, 9 is 13. So we've got root 13 as our magnitude of u. And let's see, is that a, that's a negative 2 squared is 4, plus 25 is root 29. Can you read my own writing? So we've got root 13 times root 29 in the denominator. Um, let's go ahead and multiply those two together. So that's going to give us the square root of 377. <coughs> Excuse me. So that is more doable in your calculator. So in your calculator, inverse cosine, in parentheses, 11 over root 377. And that should give us our angle theta to be 55. And to the nearest thousandths, 0.491. That's in degrees. Okay, so that's our angle theta. Looking at our diagram, that makes sense. 55 degree angle between those two vectors. You can do that. All right, so here's example number two. Um, give it a try in your notes, and we'll talk about it in class tomorrow. <clears throat> Okay, so continuing with the theme of the angles between vectors, um, what are orthogonal vectors? Okay, orthogonal vectors um, are vectors that are perpendicular, okay, except for our slacker vector, the zero vector. Um, orthogonal is pretty much synonymous with perpendicular, okay? Um, and to, to show or to prove that two vectors are orthogonal, we can find their dot product, okay? If their dot product is zero, then they are orthogonal. So, um, it's kind of a shortcut. We don't need to go through all of the process of finding that angle. If we do the dot product and it's zero, then they gotta be orthogonal. So, um, vector u, vector v, we wanna prove they are orthogonal. So we wanna do the dot product of these two. All right, so dot product of u, and V. We're going to multiply our two first terms, so 2 times negative 6, add that to the product of our second terms, 3 and 4. 2 times negative 6 is a negative 12, 3 times 4 is a positive 12, any number plus its opposite is 0. So, uh, proven that these two are indeed orthogonal. Okay, so that's all we need to show that the dot product is zero. All right, we're going to skip these guys and go into the back of our notes. Let's go to another application that is uh, more useful in the world of physics. How do you calculate work? <coughs> Not work at McDonald's or at the movie theater. Um, or at YMCA, but uh, work in physics. So work meaning uh, force and um, uh, direction. So work is usually measured in foot-pounds or newton meters. One newton meter is commonly referred to as one joule. And to find work, we can take our force vector and our a to b vector, which is uh, the direction and the distance of, of um, where we're moving an object and how far, and take the dot product of those two. Okay, so if W is our work, F is our force, and our force is acting in the direction of um, our A to B vector. So, we're going to do one of these examples together, and there's a couple for you to practice. Example number one, find the work done by a 10-pound force acting in the direction of vector 1, 2, in moving an object 3 feet from A to B. <clears throat> so, let's take this and let's break it down. 
we are going to use our formula here of work equals um, the dot product of our force vector and our a to b vector. So we're going to need to find each of these individual vectors. Well, our a to b vector is basically given to us right here. Okay, we're going to move the object from 0, 0 to 3, 0. So that vector, go ahead and do the easy part first, is going to be in component form 3, 0. Okay, we're just moving it due east or to the right um, three units. Okay, so we are, in essence, done with um, all of this part of the problem. Okay, so now we need to focus on the first part. Okay, a 10 pound force in the direction 1, 2. So this is kind of nice because it breaks it down into the two parts of our, of our uh, force vector. 10 pound force tells us our magnitude. Okay, so this is the magnitude of our vector. And then this 1, 2 tells us what direction it's going in. Now, problem is, this isn't in component form. So we've got the magnitude, we've got the direction, we need to get it in component form. So let's do that for our force vector. Okay, so we know it's got a magnitude of 10. What we need to do is make this a unit vector, so we can multiply that by a magnitude of 10 and uh, get our component vector for our force. So we're going to multiply 10 times our direction vector. And again, to find the, the unit vector going in the same direction as a given vector, we want to divide that by its magnitude. Okay, so keeping in mind that a um, unit vector V is any vector divided by its magnitude. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so let's simplify. Um, we need to find the magnitude. So we've got 10 times 1, 2 on top. Okay, so the magnitude is going to be square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared. So we've got 10, 1, 2, so we've got 1 plus 4 is 5, so that's going to be over root 5. So we're really taking 10 over root 5 times our vector 1, 2. And we don't necessarily have to rationalize our denominator. But I think when we do, we're going to get rid of our denominator altogether. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's take this um, 10 over root 5 and rationalize it. So that's going to give us 10 root 5 over 5. And 5 goes into 5 once, goes into 10 twice. So we've really got 2 root 5. times our direction vector. Okay, so 2 root 5 times 1 is just 2 root 5. Whoops. And 2 root 5 times 2 is 4 root 5. So here is our force vector here. <clears throat> So now we want to take that and find the dot product of our force vector and our AB. So again, work is the dot product of our force vector and our A to B vector. Okay, so we should expect a scalar as our, as our answer. Um, so force vector 2 root 5, 4 root 5 dot product with our a to b, 3, 0. And when we do our dot product, multiply our first terms, 2 root 5 times 3 plus product of our second terms, 4 root 5 times 0. Second terms aren't going to really affect us because of that 0 there. 
Okay, so we've got 6 root 5 plus 0, which is just 6 root 5. So if we wanted the exact work, 6 root 5 foot pounds, pounds, that's an L. <clears throat> Or if we wanted it to the nearest thousandth, put that in your calculator, and we should get 13 and 416 thousandths foot pounds. Okay, so that is our work for this problem. The work for the work of this problem. So we did, again, to recap, uh, we found our force vector by multiplying the given magnitude times the unit vector or the direction. Uh, we found our um, a to b vector, and we found the dot product of those two. Okay, so um, on your notes page, here are a couple of more examples similar to that previous one that you can practice and that we'll go over in class tomorrow. So there's example two and example three. And let's look at example four real quick. Okay, this one gives us a little bit different information. Um, if we're given the angle between our force vector and our a to b vector, then we can use a different formula where work is the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of our a to b vector times the cosine of that angle theta, which is the angle between our two force and a to b vectors. Okay, so no dot product in this one. This is actually just multiplication since these two are scalars. <clears throat> so, number four, the angle between a 75-pound force and uh, vector A to B is 60 degrees, given A and B. Find the work done by, by the force vector and moving an object from A to B. Okay, so using our formula here, we want to find the work. So work is the magnitude of our force. Well, they tell us it's a 75-pound force, so we don't have to do much work or calculations there. Uh, then we want the magnitude of A to B. So if we find the distance from A to B, that's going to be our magnitude. So we've got the difference in our x's squared plus the difference in our y's squared, and then we're going to multiply that times the cosine of the angle between the two vectors, which they tell us is 60 degrees, and that's going to tell us our work. So let's simplify this. So we've got 75, so doing the algebra here, we get this is the square root of 29. Okay, putting this into our calculator, we get to the nearest thousandth, 201 and 944 foot pounds, 944 thousandths foot pounds of work. Okay, so that is the dot product of vectors and the two applications that we are going to use it for.